This is a fascinating drama in the city you both love so much. Here's what the law says. This law, Illinois state law, in effect since 1871, quote, a person is not eligible for an elective municipal office unless that person is a qualified elector of the of the municipality and has resided in the municipality at least one year next preceding the election or appointment. Now, here's what Rahm says. I think what's important is not my residency, but the residents of the city of Chicago. I've paid tax here, I've voted here, and I do think the people of the city of Chicago know full well that uh, they are going to look for somebody who is going to talk about the issues that matter to them. So he says, you know, don't read the law literally. Everyone knows I'm from Chicago. Uh, Roland Martin, Martin, if you do read the law literally, he might have a problem. Well, he might have a problem, but keep in mind, President George H.W. Bush, uh, he actually resided in Houston. Him and his wife had a suite at the Houstonian Hotel. I'm a native Texan. I remember it well. And remember, that was their official residence. Although he was vice president, he also was president. And so he w will go back and vote there and was considered a Texan. So it's really based upon, frankly, how the election folks there in Chicago rule. But there is precedent in other places, that being your official residence. Precedent in other places, Lynn Sweet, but other places don't play politics like Chicago does. <laughs> no, this is part of just, frankly, business as usual, hard bore politics, where the best way to win an election is to knock a strong rival off the ballot any way that's legally possible. The Emanuel campaign basically is arguing that intent is what a judge will look at. In this case, we'll get to a court. Challenge is expected to be filed next week. Then the three members, Chicago Board of Elections, rules on it. Loser will uh, go to a court. Appellate could go to the Illinois Supreme Court. Manuel's people argue that he never intended to move to Washington permanently and he never established a permanent residence. And that could be proven easily enough because there was just a six-month lease on the house that was left. So uh, while this is a ripe legal question, as you point out, uh, Manuel's trying to frame the politics as an attempt just to prevent people from Chicago having a choice. Frankly, it's just a bit of politics as usual in Chicago. A, a bit of politics as usual in Chicago, but it could have a dramatic impact on this big race for mayor and on Rahm's decision to give up a pretty powerful job to go home and run. Here's what election lawyer Bert Odelson says. He's the one who's been dubbed the Rahm stopper in your press out in Chicago <laughs> there, says he's going to challenge this. He says this one's easy. Rahm admits he lived in Washington with his family, his children and we're in school there. The bottom line is Mr. Emanuel has not lived in Chicago. Now, to prove his case, you know, he could cite all the photos we have in our own library. We can show you Rahm Emanuel at the White House all throughout 2009. In fact, in one of the months he was disqualified, he was on my program, my old program, State of the Union. Rahm Emanuel sitting across the table from me. That was one of the months where the elections board sent a letter to his house saying, ratify you should be on the voter rolls. It came back returned to sender. So, Roland, this could come down to just interpretation sure. of, of how strict they want to apply this. Well, absolutely. And keep in mind that um, you, you have a history of folks there in Chicago challenging petitions. Uh, also, uh, now, challenging one, of them, one of them includes the current president of the United Abs States. Including that's how Barack yeah, Obama precisely, got to start absolutely. In politics. And again, the, the, look, that's how he got to start the, politics. The, the, the law is certainly the law. Uh, and when you talk about residing in a place, you know, I understand this whole notion of I didn't intend tend to move to D.C., but look, I'm sorry, if you actually move your family there, your kids are enrolled in school there, you live there. And so, look, he's hoping that, that the people are not as literal, but he could very well be knocked off the ballot. And so, I mean, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but if I'm a manual, I would be a little worried. Well, well clearly, ahead, the campaign is taking this on. They're not running away from it. But a Cook County Circuit Court judge, which will be the first judge to hear it after the Chicago Board of Election Commissioners, are allowed to look at the whole picture and including the idea that Ram was called to service much as somebody in the military was to work for a commander in chief. So no one disputes <laughs> the facts here. Clearly Ram was in Washington, uh, but it was clear also that he intended to go back. And I think intent is a part of Illinois law. And that's why this will end up going to a court Wait, you, because judges are allowed to look uh, at the whole uh, picture. You no, know, John, I, I mean, John, I still have a home in the Dallas area. I intend to go back. But I haven't lived there physically in six years. Does so the fact I get that he moved, to, to, to that point, does the fact that you know, he was separated from his family, he didn't like it, he has young children, and his right. wife and his children did move here, and then Mayor Daley frankly caught him by surprise. He, he, thought, he, had, he thought he had more time here. The, uh, and so in the sense that the family, does the family uprooting to come with him, does that hurt his argument? It I does think, because that's why he, he rented out his house. Uh, and, right. and he spent the first uh, months of 2009 here alone. And I think it's, it, Roland, in all respect to your keeping a residence in, in Dallas, that's not the point. The point is that he was called to serve a president of the United States. He was called to, to 
to service. And there is no, 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 no. room in, in Illinois law for people who go to work for, for elected officials out of the state. So there are other points well, of law here that one I, could I, look but, at. We're but, not but, dealing with just anyone who moves and keeps real estate. But, but, but Lynn, he wasn't called to serve by the commander-in-chief to go to Iraq or Afghanistan. I mean, a political job I will not equate with a military job. The bottom line is, look, we all take jobs in other cities across the country, everyday people. And so it's not a question of, well, I was called to serve by the president. It was still a job. But well, it is. Actually, I think a judge what? may respectfully disagree with you that it does matter in this case who the employer was. One of the things that Ron knows is the rough and tumble of Chicago politics. He has an iron stomach. He knows that every challenge that could come his way, as with anyone who, who tries to run in Chicago, will be thrown at him. And one, that's why they're trying to frame this now as an attempt to throw him, uh, to deny the people of Illinois, of Chicago, their right to vote. And I handed to him, that's what they want to message at that way. On the other hand, I see it more as just the rough and tumble of Chicago politics it, at play here, very and dramatic way. And is it the rough and tumble at play in a very dramatic way because they think if they can't knock him off the ballot, he's got the resources to probably win? You know, but you know what? I don't necessarily think it's a question of resources. Look, the February election is going to boil down to two things. Can you be one of the top two? I don't think there's one candidate who would likely get more than 50 percent of the vote. And so Emmanuel's whole job is I need to be one of the top two. That's the real issue there. And so if you're running against him, that's it's all about position. And so you're looking at neighborhoods and you're looking at ethnic groups, you're looking at different parts of the, of, of the city. That's what it boils down to. And so I, I, I've never believed that Emmanuel is the front runner because this thing is wide open. So the national media is saying he's the front runner. I'm not sure that's really the case on the ground. Well, Roland, I have been in Chicago a lot recently. And at, in, in the beginning, I was hesitant to call him a front runner. But there is enough evidence right now to say that he certainly has a very big running start on all the rivals because he has out organized them and has more money. I mean, there are, and we have a lot of polls now that are showing it. So I think there, is, there are some data points to look at to say that Rahm is running ahead of the other contenders right now. I will only advise him that Senator Hillary Clinton was called the inevitable candidate. And we know what happened there.